hey Jamie oh we're waiting for Jamie here she comes here she comes here she comes I'll try for hi Jamie. hi how, how are, are you, you? I'm good, and I also do that all the time. <laughs> I thought I was the only one. I'm sometimes I have like a dorky moment, and I'm like, okay, wait, it's that's be wait, that's you. <laughs> and I watch it all the time. I swear, I could get my boyfriend in here. He's like, that's your show. It's between that and Dateline on NBC. I'm like really weird like that. But how are you? How are you holding up during this quarantine? Well, um, I'm doing all right. I feel like this week, some of the like stir crazy, a little bit of the boredom is starting to kick in a little bit. Yeah. Um, I feel like I was able to kind of find little projects here and there, especially because I had just moved into this apartment a few months ago. But now I feel like I'm running out of ideas. Really? <laughs> no more decorating? No more I know. Unpacked. I'm like, well, the shelves are up. The books are on it. The artwork is hung. <laughs> What do I do now? What do I do now? Right. Right. What have you no, been doing? <laughs> I, I've been maintaining, you know, like I've been noticing with me each month, like I'll have a month where I just cry I, and everything is like getting to me and I just need a moment to just start acting like a, a girl <laughs> for, for no apparent reason, I think. So. Yeah. So like um, mentally, you know, I mean, I, I, I'm not going to lie. I have anxiety. So sometimes like, it gets the best of me, you know, everything I gets do on too. my nerves. I'm like, get out of my face, you know, but um, I've been doing, I think a really good job of, you know, maintaining it. You know, I have an awesome, you know, support, you know, my boyfriend's amazing. I'm Sorry, you might have lost me for a second. Can you no, hear me now? No, I, you okay. lost me. My mom just called. I had to ignore her. <laughs> Sorry, mom. <laughs> Sorry, and I should, I was going to tell her earlier, do not call me at 4 p.m. I'm doing something. But you Busy. know how moms are. She always does that. But um, one thing that I, I noticed, and, and I love this about you, is that you work with um, National Alliance on Mental Illness. So I yes. wanted to get you on today, you know, with, with, uh, Wellness Wednesday, and just really talk about, like, why that was important to you. It's important to me because it's something that all of us deal with as humans in different degrees, whether we're exper experiencing challenges ourselves, or deal with loved ones or friends or family members who are maybe str struggling and we don't know how to help. Yeah. And that's the same reason that I, that I really champion the veteran and armed forces causes. Cause I think there's a lot of people like myself who kind of don't know how to help or how to get help if you need it. So for me, I have this platform and I feel like it's wasted if I'm not using it on something. And for me, I've struggled with mental health issues, you know, with it, it, it can be whether it's situational or something like for me, lifelong anxiety has been an issue. Um, I've gone through depressive periods in my life because work sometimes dries up and mm -hmm. if your purpose and your sense of value and self-worth is tied to your job. I know a lot of us are like that you know, it can be really hard to push through. So for me, it's important that when I'm working, when I'm visible, that I'm trying to champion those causes, because I feel a lot of it too, you know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you a lot of people would think like, oh, you're on this TV show, why do you get depressed? Or why is, and I, and I, I don't want to say, oh, all creatives are depressed, but I do notice a lot of people in the arts get depressed a little bit quicker and faster. And like you said, especially if you're like tying your career into yourself, mm -hmm. you know, worth and, and value. And like you said, work dries up, you don't have the, you know, financial resources. You're like, why am I yeah. even doing this to myself? You know, And you're publicly vulnerable. Yeah. You don't true. get to, you know, you're not at, at home saying, oh man, I lost this job. You know, it's about people want you need to keep up a certain appearance it's like right. even when I wasn't doing well people thought I was busy because I was trying to keep up an appearance and that is exhausting especially when all you're trying to do is take care of yourself mm -hmm. um you know so it's like people have a, a vision of what they think an idealized vision especially with social media of all of our lives and 
we're a lot more alike, I think, than people realize. No, for sure. So what is it specifically that you do with uh, the organization? Um, I work as an advocate for them, you know, okay. one of their allies. So whenever there's an opportunity, whenever they're doing a new campaign or something that kind of needs to be spread, then that's something that I help to facilitate. Or if there are events, I'll speak at events or send videos, things like that. You know, it takes a little getting used to that you hold value to strangers when you're in this position. Mm -hmm. um, and so for me, it may be taking an hour out of my day to do a two minute video but to the people who are going to receive that video, it means so much. And that's kind of something you always have to check back in about because it's yeah. weird, you know? Yeah, no, for sure, for sure. Because um, I've interviewed, uh, you know, people that you've actually worked with, um, some of the cast members from Chicago Med, Chicago Fire, Chicago PD. So, you know, I'm very familiar of how sometimes my videos impact someone else. And I'm like, I have no idea. I'm just trying to make it happen yep. and get through it so um no it's it's a great thing that you are you know advocating for that because it's so important especially now i mean everybody's in quarantine going people you know going a little crazy yeah. <laughs> and yeah. to have something or someone there knowing or to say like hey it's not you only you i, I go through it too um, one of the things that I saw and noticed, which I thought was a really cool, not cool, but interesting, um, was in 2018, you were, you were on unemployment. Yes. I hadn't worked for about 18 months. Um, and the year before that, I worked more than I ever had. And it got to a point where I was like, ooh, I'm out of savings. And then I ran out of unemployment, you know, and it was like, what am I going to do? And And when you're, this is happening to you and you're, 32 years old, 33 years old, because I'm 35 now, but that was a few years ago. It's like, what do I do? Who am mm -hmm. I supposed to get help from? Because I'm very prideful and I like to help others, but I'm not very good at asking for it. Same. So I really didn't get help and support that I probably could have reached out for earlier until sort of the end of what I then realized was a depressive period for me. Mm. And I didn't know it until my doctor started asking me some questions about how I'd been feeling because I thought I had a vitamin deficiency. I was just like, I don't know what's going on with me. And he said, you know, he's like, I think that you might be going through a depression. And he said, I think it's situational for you. I think it has to do with where you are right now and what, what is and is not going on. So we found ways of kind of getting through it. But yeah, I didn't even it was like at that point that I feel like I started to kind of reach out and say, Hey, I'm sorry that maybe I disappeared over the last few months or yeah. thank you to those who reached out. It wasn't something that I could understand while it was happening. It kind of was after the fact. And now I'm grateful for that experience because I think I can recognize it sooner for sure for it like snowballs. Yes, for sure. I mean, um, I was just talking to someone on Twitter about anxiety and I said, you know, I'm kind of actually happy that I know what I'm about to have. Like, look, I always, I'm, I'm always saying like, I'm about to get anxiety, you know, <laughs> like, yeah. you know, you please. start to feel that itch and you're yeah, like, oh, I'm to feel like I got to get out of here. I got to get out of the situation. So what are some of the things that you do? Because like I said, today is well, uh, for me, wellness Wednesday. And I want to share it with people that may be out there, whether they're struggling financially, mentally through this quarantine, because you're having to kind of reflect with you yourself and in yourself, you know? And so what are some ways that you help get you through your depression and, you know, your down time? You know, I, I, there's some stuff I do in the moment, certainly with anxiety, some like, you know, cognitive behavioral therapy type things where, and I think this is an exercise for anybody who's feeling stressed out in a moment or panicking or anything. There's obviously a lot of breathing exercises that you can do. But one thing I really like is to check in with all your senses. So mm -hmm. if you're freaking out and you're starting to like be in a situation you can't escape or you are just feeling stressed or panicked, I kind of check in and say, all right, what, what am I touching right now? I feel my butt on the chair. I feel my feet on the floor. I feel my hands on my legs. What do you hear? And you think about all the things that you can hear. I can hear my own voice. I can hear the light buzzing and you kind of take inventory of all your senses and it brings you into that moment again. It makes you, forces you to be present and kind of interrupts whatever that cycle might be that's kind of got a hold of you. And so that's something that really is important to me. Mm -hmm. um, it kind of helps get me back into the moment. 
do you ever um because what i learned that helps for me is um there's an app i use it's called insight timer yes i love insight timer okay yeah so you know so um sometimes i'll just listen to that while going to sleep or waking up so i can start the day with a renewed you know sense and and just a different mindset you know um or sometimes if i know i'm getting anxiety and i'm like okay i'm you know things are getting on my nerves i'll just pop my you know airpods in and listen to that And it's okay to say no too. Like if you're having social, if you're feeling socially not like ready to share yourself with somebody, like we, I think a lot of times we force ourselves to do things because we feel like we should, because we want to be a good friend or a good daughter or a good sister, whatever it is. But sometimes it's better to take that time for yourself too. For sure. I think that's a really cool thing and very important. So I hope it's helping those that are watching yes, the live. Yes, try it. <laughs> yeah, definitely try it. Insight Timer <laughs> is the app. Download it if you can. Now, one of the things I thought I saw about you and just kind of shifting into <laughs> something a little bit more positive <laughs> is um, I thought it was really cool, and I didn't know this, that you you like acted on the Call of Duty, a video game. And yes. I... I saw the video of like the behind the scenes of it and how like, like you said, you're, you're working and then you never get to see your work. So you never get to say, Oh, I did a good job or critique it. Cause you know, if you're anything like me, an artist like me, you are definitely going back and looking at your work or you can't even look at it. You can't even listen to your voice. Yeah. It's video games are so much fun. Cause it's like, there are no costumes, there are no sets, there are not really props. I mean, we'll have real weighted weapons and things that we know how to use properly. So all of our gestures and hand movements are correct. We have kind of thick gear on so that our uniforms make sense in the animation. But other than that, it's like playing make-believe in your backyard. For sure. And then you're having you, to memorize you don't get to everything. See you. you don't get to see your work. No. So I have, I've played through about half of that game because I'm just not a very good player. Um, but I made my, I'm going to force myself to go back. That's on the next on the list for this time. Right. Because they sent us all of our scenes, <clears throat> excuse me, mm-hmm. so I could watch them all, but I refused to watch them that way. And I forced myself to play through the game to see all of our scenes. And I have, I have like probably half to a third. That's left. a cool, that's like a cool, and I think a different way of acting. Cause I was looking at it and I'm like, oh, that's pretty. And the way that you explained it, like you don't have any of the props. You don't have any of the stage. It's just you mm-hmm. and this other person. And it's like, go at it, figure it out. You know? Yep. Yeah. So out of all the things, and then I know this is a hard question cause you are on Law and Order. So I'm pretty sure you're going to be like, that's my favorite. But all of the shows that you've acted on, like which one is your favorite, would you say? Well, it would be a toss up between Call of Duty and Law and Order because those are the two things where I've spent the most time with the people that I'm working with and gotten to know them really well. Um, and the other thing that makes two of those two jobs my favorites are the kind of the, the socially responsible component of them. Call of Duty is when I started getting involved with veterans and armed forces organizations. And now I've been working for those organizations for five, six years. Um, and with SVU, the amount of people who are vulnerable and who reach out with their stories of survival is remarkable. And to know that our show is providing them any form of comfort or guidance or support is like one of the most gratifying things that you can ever experience for me as an actor. For and sure. For sure. So, you know, outside of the cool factor of both of those jobs, they also, for me, happen to have a social impact component that really grasp you know, means audience. a lot to me yeah, yeah. and it, it really connects with the audience because i mean these are they, i do notice on law and order that they do take little tidbits from situations that have occurred mm-hmm. and kind of you know make a, a reenactment of it so i i i really have been enjoying you and watching you on the show have you gotten your groove yet as cat i know I, I feel like you're still like kind of Finding it's your footing a, in this character and the background of this character. It's an interesting journey because it, you're not just coming onto a show for a few episodes where the character's already figured out. They give you all the information and you kind of do your thing. In this case, you're building your character with the writers, with the producers as it's going. Mm-hmm. And there's certainly a foundation that's been established. But at the same time, like you're, I'm learning about her as I'm receiving scripts. Um, and, and that's really fun and exciting to build a character 
Um, the only, the major challenge with that on a show like this is that these other characters at the least have been living in their, these other actors have been living in their characters for at least five years, 10 years, 20 years right. <laughs> as you go down the line. And so for me, it was about creating a whole character as quickly and as authentically as I could and being comfortable as that character. So as to be in the same sort of tone as everyone else on the show, you know, it's like, you can't be, it's not, there's a fine line between being dramatic or being realistic. You know, you're, it's still entertainment, but right. our stuff is based in realism. So it's a really kind of delicate balance. And especially when you're surrounded by people who can eat, sleep and breathe their characters without anyone giving them lines. Yeah. And, so, <laughs> so what is like, what's the, what is, what's the challenge for you? Because I know, even though you work with the producers and things of that nature, you're trying to also to create your backstory through acting and figuring out like, okay, delivering this line, how Cat would, you know? It's a collaboration, which has been nice. They give me enough to stand on and to go on, but are absolutely open to anything that I have to say about it. You know, cool. it, they, they, Warren Light, who's our um, showrunner, who had been the showrunner in the past and was gone for a couple of years and then came back. He is very much someone who appreciates being based in realism and keeping the characters grounded. So they wanted to keep as much of Cat relatable to me as well. Oh, you okay. know, they wanted to make her Latina. Then when I was cast, they made her Lebanese. They wanted to, you know, they asked kind of what I do on my time off and I box and things like that. And so the boxing, they were like, hey, you box, right? Let's, let's, we're going to do an episode about oh, that. Oh, okay. That's cool. Um, in the necklace I wear, which a lot of people um, ask me about, when I went in for my fitting, I wore a necklace that had Jamie in Arabic on it that my aunt had gotten me in Lebanon. And the costumer, uh, our costumer, Juliet, loved it. And she said, you know, what would your character maybe wear something like that? And I was like, that would be awesome. So they went out and had a custom gold nameplate made for me that says Catriona in Arabic. Oh, that's and cool. And that, it's just such a, a, an awesome little thing that for me, putting that on every day, like just immediately is like a tie to myself. Yeah, well, I'm not Arabic, but for some reason I decided to get an Arabic tattoo just because mm -hmm. I, I don't know. I like the letter. I like the way yeah. it looks. I don't know. I, I just do. But it's one, beautiful. <laughs> thank you. One similarity that I noticed too is you're a cat lover and you're, your name is Cat <laughs> on the show. I know. Such a loser. Uh, <laughs> um, yes, I grew up with cats. Uh, my fiance has an awesome cat that has become my cat over the last couple of years. Um, and so right now I have Bruce Wayne. He's the bat cat. Oh, he's beautiful. He's, he's beautiful. All black, big yellow eyes. And he's the Batman sweetest. Cat. Yeah. Bruce Wayne, <laughs> the cat. <laughs> now, um, one of the things too, um, that I love about your character. So you were raised in DC, which is not far from New York you know so you mm -hmm. have that east coast swang or east coast you know flavor to you so you fit like right in yeah that part was you know it, uh that was just kind of fun not only to be able to come back to the east coast to work because i've been in la for 11 years at that point but i was just happy to have a character that kind of had my vibe you know because it's one thing it, they're really it's really fun to play roles that are huge departures from yourself because you get to explore a whole different side of life but especially on a show like this i think where you're working 10 months out of the year it needs to be sustainable as well and i think that's part of why they they really keep a lot of truth in the characters on the show as it relates to the actor because it just makes it more sustainable yeah i love it <laughs> somebody says i mm -hmm. love when like russ says kit kat who says oh, Lakira. Lakira. Yeah. Oh, who? Yeah. Wait, what character is Lakira on the show? Lakira is, um, she's the uh, trans woman who was in two oh, different yeah, episodes. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, speaking of that, is so didn't we leave off with Kat subtly, subtle, a uh, subtle, like, you know, her coming out as bi? Yes. Okay. So yep. did you put, did you decide to do that or was that just the writers or was it a collaborative effort? It was something they had been thinking about, I think, for a little while. And as my character entered, it started to feel like it was appropriate. And, and you know, we had a couple conversations about it. And, you know, we went with it. And mm -hmm. I love the way that they revealed it. It wasn't a huge deal, um, which I think is important, I think, for it to kind of be just uh, 
another aspect of her personality is really important, especially when it comes to representation for the LGBTQ community in entertainment in general. Mm -hmm. um, and so they handled it really delicately and, and, and just kind of threw it out there and Rollins didn't really stutter at all. And I think that that is an example of the reaction that, that the, that these types of communities are hoping when they share something so vulnerable about For themselves sure. that they're accepted as who they were five minutes before they shared that information. Right. So right. I think that was important. The thing that I like about it is it, it didn't give you too much. You know, we don't want to put everything out about cat right away. I right. think give it in dribbles, you know, show a little leg, take it back, you know, and then let people as, the seasons go on, grow with you and you get to know more about that character, mm -hmm. you know, and little dribbles like that. Um, yeah. So I, I, I thought it was, you know, cool and enjoyable. So I want to talk about, okay, because I always felt like I said, you know what, I could do an episode of Law and Order and be like a really stern lawyer, you know? Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, I know with being a detective on the show, a lot of running, a lot of physical activity, but you mm -hmm. seem to be okay with that. I mean, you come from doing boxing. Yeah, I, I love being physical. You know, that boxing episode, we trained a little bit. I've been training for months as it was because that's just what I do for a workout. So 99% of that episode, um, you know, we did the boxing for it and our doubles came in and just did a few moments you know here mm -hmm. and there and Manny who played Esperanza who did such an amazing job she was game and she was athletic and so we were able to really kind of spar and do our thing for that whole scene without having to use a ton of the doubles which was really fun um and I think you know I, I think that they're like let's throw this rookie in here and we're going to make her ass run up and down stairs and <laughs> jump over shit and cuff everybody and speak all the languages. And, you know, I feel like <laughs> yeah. they just kind of were like, let's see how she does. And I unfortunately have too much pride to, to not be decent at anything they throw at me. So I feel like they just keep adding to the list. I mean, well, it, so the way that you came on the show was, was it because you, came on Chicago Med and I think I heard that Dick, Dick Wolf really liked you and then he... I I have no idea like if that was part of this honestly okay. I, I did it that one episode uh, it was a crossover with Med and PD and and that was my first time working in the franchise and a few years went by and this audition came and I submitted it on tape I recorded a taped audition and mail, you know, sent it into email, mailed, emailed it into New York. Um, when I was about a week or two later saying I was still in the running and that they wanted to offer me the role. And I was like, what? Hallelujah. <laughs> I know it's one of those things where I'm like, now that I'm in the family, I just can't F it up and I can stay as long as they'll have me. For sure. For sure. I would have been tootsie rolling, doing all the things. <laughs> <laughs> all of them. Pop scotching. I had to get up off the floor first after 18 months of stress. I know. I, like, ah. I know. It's like grueling. And you're like, yes, you know, <laughs> but know that, that, that is, so good because I've met Dip Wolf through all of the NBC stuff. Like I said, for mm -hmm. like probably like five years, I've done the like crossover stuff. So I've met him, you know, in passing. I haven't really been able to interview him, but um, I thought I heard along the way that he liked you so much in those episodes that that's why. But who knows? It could have right. been, I mean, you're a very talented person. You've been acting for a very long time. Plus, I did not know you're classically trained. You're a classically trained singer. Mm -hmm. Yes, I trained for about 12 years privately when I was younger. I started when I was like seven or eight years old and, um, and then trained all the way until I went to college. Um, did a lot of musical theater, but in college, I actually got sick and I tore one of my vocal cords coughing and I kind of had a raspy voice for about a year and a half at the end of high school, beginning of college. And so I stopped singing had surgery on my voice and um, kind of got into straight acting. And wow. that's sort of when I made the shift from musical theater and kind of the Broadway world um, into more straight plays at the time. And um, 
you know, that is sort of what opened me up then again to film and television and things. So when I graduated college, I did theater in DC and then decided that I wanted to make a living doing it, which meant that I had to go to LA or New York and I chose LA and was out there for 11 years before this job popped up. Wow. So do you still sing from time to time? I like to sing still. I haven't done it like properly in a while, but I would love to. Like, I mean, I love banging out some karaoke and I would love to, I'd love to explore like jazz and blues a little bit. I think that would suit sort of where my voice sits naturally these days. Right. For I'm sure. not trying to do anything stressful like a lot of classical can be. So I'm like, maybe something more chill that fits who I am now. That, that would be really fun for me to get into. Yeah, very like Sade vibe or something. I would love that. Get to I sing it. some, I, I love Sade and I also can sing some male R&B like it's nobody's job. Oh, like I, <laughs> I don't know why. But who, like, who, who, like, who, who, Jamie, please, who, tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me. <laughs> Okay. I mean, some old school Ursha, I can really, really get in on that. Okay. Uh, okay. I can, I can play right here. I got. <laughs> we'll do I karaoke got the laptop. next time. We can do it. <laughs> we'll do oh, bedroom so, karaoke next time. <laughs> okay, next time. I'm, I'm holding you to it. Okay, because I like to sing too, and I know all the songs. We can do it together. Come on. So, I love it. Let's take this time out. I got a couple of questions from fans that I. I'm hoping you can answer. So I'll start with uh, this is this this uh, Twitter name is at the Queen's Quotes. And mm -hmm. she or he wants to know what is one thing you learned about sexual assault that you didn't know before joining SBU? I think that's a great question. Um, one of the main things sorry, I'm just adjusting you guys real quick because I don't want I need a new phone. Don't even ask. <laughs> I'm like, um, so one of the main things that I learned about that was really crazy because I just had no idea was um, the fact that there are over that there are, are over a hundred thousand untested rape kits in the United States. Mm. Um, it might even be two hundred thousand. I feel like I'm screwing up that number, but if you really want to enlighten yourself, Mariska's documentary "I Am Evidence" was it's heavy and it's unbelievable, but it's important. And for me, that was one of the the craziest realizations to have that that there are warehouses full of dna the city man. and when you consider that they think whenever they've tested large swaths of them in certain cities you know you're looking at 60 to 70 percent of the rapes being committed by a serial rapist mm. and when you think about the fact that their dna has been sitting in some warehouse somewhere possibly available for us to be able to prosecute that person and get them off the street but it's just sitting there it's absolutely maddening horrifying horrifying yes horrifying <laughs> um i have a question from at Brittany. i think this is kriegel guys don't kill me i am bad at names <laughs> um she says i heard kelly taped your dressing room up <laughs> for making fun of her atlanta braves any other behind the scenes pranks between the cast um, she didn't do it because I made fun of the Atlanta Braves. She did it because the Nationals are better than the Atlanta Braves, and she's a sore loser. So <laughs> during the World Series, Atlanta Braves were playing, and we were playing on the same night, different teams. And I, you know, we're talking trash all day. I'm like, Nationals are going to move on. Braves aren't. And the next morning, I come in. The Braves had lost their game, and we had won. And I came in and there's just neon green tape that was oh, from end wow. to end on my doorway. So I couldn't walk in my dressing room. And she had one of our customers, Simon, who's from, who's also a Braves fan. They had taped my door and I left it up until the end of the season when I took it down. <laughs> so how are you getting along? Like, I mean, of course, I don't, you're not going to be like, oh yeah, we're beefing. But did everybody seem to like embrace you being the, you Absolutely. Know, yeah. I keep saying it was terrifying right until the second I actually walked through the door because mm -hmm. you don't want to screw it up. And like these people are in a groove and you don't want to be the one that slows it down. And it's all of that is stuff you have to think about. You should, if you're entering a space like that. I mean, it's, it was funny because, you know, I think I had a better time than Kat did when it came to sort of getting along with a new group of people that now you have to work with for years to come. It's mm -hmm. that part of it was really helpful as an actress to be going through the exact same experience that she was at the exact same time. Um, but everybody was so kind and warm and welcoming and we give each other shit and we, 
we get things done, but everybody has fun and everybody had great advice for me, you know, about different dynamics on set and just generally like how things work. And, you know, ice was, you know, from the beginning, he kind of, he, I always call him like my uncle because <laughs> oh, it's yeah. always like, you know, it's always this story twi- time with Uncle Ice. <laughs> always Twitter story time. Is so wild. Oh my I god, that it. motherfucker has lived eight lives. <laughs> he has lived eight different lives. Like he has, he knows everything about everything. Yeah. He is so kind, but doesn't suffer fools. Like it's 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 an awesome thing, and I think that's what's interesting about all four of my castmates is they all are the warmest, kindest people but at the same time are all, you know, like badasses and leaders and, and, but we all get to be goofy together. So I feel I'm so grateful to my castmates and to the crew for have for giving me such a soft landing. Mm -hmm. Because I was, I was nervous, but I I, I couldn't let them know that. (laughs) I'm pretty sure I would be too shaking in my boots. Okay. I know. How exactly. (laughs) What have you learned so far? And I think this is one of the questions that um, someone asked, but uh, what have you learned so far from Mariska? Because I know that she's like everybody's fave. The first thing I learned is it's Marishka. Marishka. Thank you. For everybody out there, just so you know, Marishka. the H is invisible. Um, <laughs> Marishka. Marishka. Um, I've really learned by watching. I've been, you know, I observe her a lot and she commands attention and she's a strong leader and she knows her shit. But at the same time, she knows which crew member has a sick family member, which, you know, which costumer is expecting a, you know, a child at home in the next three weeks, you know, it's, it's, that part of it is really impressive. Is much of, you know, she runs a tight ship, but she really cares about everybody involved. And I think that there's more than one way to show that. Mm -hmm. And no one's going to know the show better than her. So watching the way that she is so gracious too with, you know, you have new directors coming in every episode and you're having to kind of relinquish power and the way that she handles that dynamic is really impressive to me. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, Now this question's from Gray's Gray's fan. It says, what was your reaction when you found out, which we kind of talked about when you found out you got the part, how has working with these amazing people been? We already kind of went over that. So I don't, I mean, you don't have to go into depth about that. I cried. There's the short answer. Yeah. She was in tears, y'all. Uh, <laughs> I would be true. too. I almost threw up. I was like, I'm going to eat again. <laughs> I can eat. I can buy some underwear. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Throw um, away the ramen, honey. I know. No more ramen. <laughs> now we can have some wine. What is, what is, what is that song? He goes, we went from, it was Biggie. He goes, we went from popping something to sipping champagne. I can't think yes, of it right yes, now. Yes, yes, yes. I yes. know what you're talking about. I can't think of it either. Simp- we went from sipping something to sipping champagne. Yeah, yeah, that one. Okay, that's what I think of. Anyway, yeah. what do you think, uh, this is from SVU, at, at SVU My on Twitter. She, uh, she he wants to know what do you think is the most valuable lesson Kat has learned this season? What is the most valuable lesson you've learned personally so far? That's a good question. Um, I think that Kat has learned and is still learning to trust her teammates. I think that she in her old position on Vice probably worked a lot on her own. And even though she worked within a team, I think that especially as an undercover officer, you're kind of having to think on your feet and do things as you see fit. And that's okay there. But as part of SVU, there's a certain way that you have to go about things in order to get justice for people. And if that's what she really wants, then she does need to learn how to work within those constructs. Um, And for me, I really learned to trust myself. You know, I, I had a hard time believing that I was like worthy of the opportunity at first, you know, especially Mm -hmm. because it came in such a weird time in my life. So being aware of what I was already bringing to the table and knowing that it was valuable and trusting myself to be well liked by the people I was going to work with, because you can't be too over eager, but you don't want to be cold, but you want to be personable, but you don't want to be overly friendly. So there's a fine line that you have to ride. And I actually think that I 
that I did a good job of that. And that was kind of something I had to learn through the process. You found your groove, girl. Trying to. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is the last Twitter question. And then I have like a few on here on Instagram. But um, Norma, mm, 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 I'm going to mess this up, sister. Palacios42 once says, uh, Benson found out about Simon. Finn has a son and grandson. We met Rollins' sister, Kim. Carisi has a sister and niece as well. Could we possibly meet Kat's family? I hope we do. Mm -hmm. I hope we do. It's all um, up to the writers. It is. And, and there's certainly space to make suggestions, you know. Um, but I'm excited to explore a little bit more about her. I know in the episodes we had lined up because we had to stop four episodes early. Um, due to Corona, so we were all, we finished episode twenty about two days before we shut down, um, and the, so there are a few in the works that I'm sure will resurface next season. Um, but I'm really excited to learn more about her family. You know, she talks about how close she is with her sister, and you get little bits here and there, and so I'm excited about that um, as much as I think other fans are as well. Cause yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm excited to delve a little deeper into Kat and her role. And I, you know, like you said, um, I do see some things about Kat cause there was one episode and you're supposed to be undercover and you broke it and then Kat got emotional. And I'm like, girl, you know, sit down. <laughs> <laughs> I know she's impulsive. Yeah. Very Which impulsive. I it's her like, asset and her downfall. This whole investigation now. I know. We need to get I justice. <laughs> so I get really involved in it too. Um, that rubbed people the wrong way in the beginning. I think that anyone who doesn't like Kat has an issue with her coming in and being disrespectful to the people that they've lived with for so many years. Yeah. And for me, at first, you kind of like have to be like, doesn't matter if they like you. And but in the end, anyone having, I've said this before, anyone having a strong reaction to your character means that you're doing a good job as an actor. So even disliking a person is still creating a person whole enough for someone to dislike. Yeah, because um, people can be so mean. I'm like looking oh, yeah. on Twitter and, you know, some people had some negative things about Ken. I learned from Ice on that one. You know, I learned from the best <laughs> when it comes to clown and haters. <laughs> I, I said, oh, Jamie doesn't play. <laughs> <laughs> I try to do it. A little gently, you know, right. I'm not trying to ruin anyone's day, but I just a gentle reminder that there are people here right. behind the computer. Right, right, right. So yeah, I can see why people are like still adjusting, but you know, some of the stuff is just outright rude comment. Yeah. But um, you're bored. We, whatever. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> Moving on. Let's take a look at some of these questions on Instagram. Now, I'm not going to be able to get through everybody's because there's a lot here, but I'll try to do um what i can um so i have this one from captain liv benson says since you became an svu actress do you feel that you're more under pressure mentally oh i like that question um i absolutely feel like i have a ton of responsibility to keep up with you know i'm I'm, I want to respectfully represent my own heritage as a Middle Eastern woman. I want to respectfully represent um, my, you know, the, the idea of, of having a bi character on the show and, and representing that community in a way that feels good to them. And, you know, not only that, but I'm carrying the legacy of a 21 year show. And even though there's five of us doing it, I'm the new one. So if something goes wrong, it looks, it's probably my fault. So, <laughs> yes, I absolutely felt a ton of pressure, but that's why the warm welcome from everybody involved was even more appreciated because it kind of helped me be as a little less hard on myself. Yeah, for sure. I, listen, I'm hard on myself. I just tweeted the other day, I got to stop putting this pressure on myself for some reason. So yep. I, I feel you there. Um, so we also have a question here from Aurora Killian 30, if I'm saying that right. It says, which show you, would you like to cross over in the SUV? <laughs> See, they put SUV and it just, yeah. out. In, uh, in the SVU, one Chicago and FBI universe. So would well, you I love like it. I like everything FBI because, of course, that sounds cool. But at the same time, I really like to eat. And Chicago has really good food, so I'd love to go shoot <laughs> there with them as well. 
<laughs> yes, it's really good food that will make you fat. Like I'm like yeah. trying to like, okay, guys, this quarantine, I need to get in the gym. So That's I've been trying true. to work out, but yeah, very delicious food. I'm <laughs> here in Chicago now, so yeah, right. I, and I'm from Chicago, so I can attest to that. Yes. Maybe. Um, let's take a look at. I have this from Yasnia, if I'm saying that right. Favorite cat moment? Yes. Um. Well, I think Cat's favorite moment is probably in the season finale or our makeshift season finale that actually still worked really well for closing out the season. Um, I think that finally arresting Davies, the man who assaulted Lakira and um killed Dakota um I think that that's probably Kat's best moment for me I had a lot of fun the day where I had there's an episode where Carisi I think it is brings in cannolis and I take a bite and I'm such an idiot I shouldn't have actually taken a bite in the first shot because I had to keep doing it and so Ice was like you messed up you know you got to keep eating those right and I was like shit Oh, I just did it impulsively because it worked. And oh. so, is so, that why you guys don't eat on camera? Because a lot of times it's like, why are they just holding this glass? Like, well, it's, it's gross, like a drink. Number one, I don't know anyone who can eat nice enough for anyone to want to look at them. But also, it is hard for continuity. It really is. Like, yeah. you take a bite of a sandwich, like you got to bring in another sandwich. Mm -hmm. So they had like a hundred effing cannolis that day, of course. So I took one bite, and then every take, every time. If Ice was off camera on that take because they were sitting on his desk, I'd have to come up and take a bite. And I look up and every time he's going. Because <laughs> he is just laughing so hard. He's laughing at me. <laughs> you were being full that idiot. day. I had like eight cannolis. I never want to eat another one again. <laughs> No. I'm not even a sweets person. I'm sorry. Oh, you're not? See, I'm a sweets person. And yesterday, I made the mistake, or the other night, I went and had some Dairy Queen. And all yesterday, topsy-turvy, because I'm lactose intolerant. So topsy-turvy, oh, yeah. all in the... I was like, I don't wish this on anyone. It, so, nope. yeah. I'm allergic to eggs, and I decided to make French omelets the other day, because I was like, screw it. <laughs> I'm going to make the best omelet ever. And like, there's a restaurant in LA called Petit Trois that makes the most incredible omelets. You can kind of do it like they do it. And I was making them and so proud of myself and eating them. And all of a sudden I realized I'd eaten like seven eggs. I was like, why? <laughs> what happened? I just got sick to my stomach, oh, yeah. but it was worth it. Yeah. It was worth it. No, for it's real. risk reward balance people. That's what it's about. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yesterday, I don't know. I was in agony, but it <sighs> tasted extremely good. I'm not going to yep. lie to you. All right. Let's take a look. And then I'm going to take a few more questions because we've kept Jamie long enough. <laughs> so um, let's just go with this one. Oh, I, I think that they're in Carisi. <laughs> Is that possible? No, I think it's Kelly. And I think that a lot of people would be extremely upset if Kat jumped Rollins in line. <laughs> Rollins would want to fight you. <laughs> Rollins, I think Rollins, you know. But I think she's in. What, what's the character? I'm, I can't, because he's kind of new to, um, I, I feel like she started oh, Jones yeah. for him. Yep, the new. Um, I can't think uh, of uh, it's played it, it, Played by Ari. I can't remember. I'm blanking on his character. Uh, Calhoun, Detective yes, Calhoun. Yes, yes. Caldo Caldoun, I think maybe. Something like um, that. Um, yeah, you know? Mm hmm I think Rollins is ready to mingle, maybe. Oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> I might have a, a, what are they, the love triangle going on there? Because I see maybe. Carisi getting the jealous bones going, so I I, I think Kat and Carisi have to figure out how to get along first. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Because you guys are always arguing, but sometimes that's passion, you know, they say. Could be. You know? Could be. I mean, he's the one who has, has all the structure and wants to make sure that we're operating within that structure so he can do his job. And I'm the one over here just effing shit up all the time. And he's uh, like, just ah. doing too much, just being young and just doing too much. Over eager. <laughs> uh, so let's see. Someone wants to know, well, yeah. Uh, Oh, this is we we got this. Our Olivia S V U says live with Kelly Giddish. I would love to. Yeah, all of us. Kelly action on here. Yeah, everybody's digging Kel Kel. 
Uh, let's see. And I think I'm going to take one, like maybe two more if you have time, Jamie. Yeah, I've got time. Okay. Um, oh, good question. What oh, is hi, it like Glenn. filming in NYC and do people stop and stare? Of course they do. You have no idea how obsessed people are with this cast. And it's hilarious as the new person, especially when we were shooting and nobody knows who I am. Because if I was standing outside my trailer or something like waiting to get in or was anywhere near the set, people would always come up to me and go, is this SVU? And, you know, they'd be like, oh, is this SVU? Are they filming? Are, are any of the actors here? And people always used to, <laughs> literally, people would ask me that. Uh, and I'm like, I don't think so. I, I, don't, I don't think they're here. Like, and I would just answer that way because I know it, it, you can't be mad at it, right? Right, like, right, right. No, for sure. But you have no idea. Like, one day we shot in Brooklyn and they chose a really busy corner because they wanted a certain vibe. And by the time people had realized what was happening, and it was Ice and I shooting um, a scene, it was one of the earlier episodes, probably one of my first three, four episodes with the young girl who runs away from Ohio to get an abortion in New York. Um, and She's sitting in panhandling on the sidewalk and we come up and approach her to try and bring her in to help her. And, oh my God, I, there was no less than a hundred people by halfway through shooting that scene that were just lining the streets. I mean, they had to have security move people so that Ice and I could stand where we needed to stand in order to do the scene. Right. And, and he is, Ice is one of the kindest, most patient people when it comes to fans and admirers, because if I'm anywhere with him, anyone who walks by says, what's up, Ice? What's going on, dude? Can we get a picture? Oh my God, I love you, man. And whether he's just, you know, giving him a fist bump or a peace sign or what up, little man, or taking a picture. <laughs> right. And something he told me, which I think is really good advice, is I said, you know, you're just I learned a lot watching you because you're so grateful and you're so kind to everyone who comes up. It doesn't matter. Who you know, if you're is. not having a good day or whatever. Like he just always is nice and kind. And he said, you know what? What I've realized is if I'm not prepared to be that way, I don't leave my house. Mm. So if it's a day, like, you know, if he's, if it's the weekend or something, we're not working and he doesn't feel like being that person. He's like, then I, then I stay home. Right. You know, right. he's like, cause it's not their fault, but also like, I need a break. Right. Um, and I thought that was really smart because that's one of those things where it's like self-preservation, but also appreciating where you came from and the different people that love him from whenever in his life that they joined his crew, like whether it was because of music or whether, you know, like it's somebody who's tied to him because they appreciate cars or they know about the fact that he served in the army or, you know, like there's so many reasons to identify with him. So the different types of people that come up to him are really interesting to me. The way that you make it sound is that he pretty much gets along with everybody. He does. And whether, I mean, whether or not he feels that way, you would never know. And that's the point. Cause he appreciates these people appreciating him. Like he's not, he's smart. He's, mm -hmm. he's kind and he's also a businessman. And he's like, who knows if those people have actually listened to my music before, but I guarantee you they go home now and maybe they'll listen to it. And it's not in a selfish way. It's just in a human way where it's like, let's be kind to one another because we can impact each other in a positive way. We have that choice. For sure. I love that. I got to, I got to meet ice and see what's up then. You make me yep. want to like, be like, Hey ice, come on, you know, let me get an interview. Yep. Um, so this is my last question for you. Cause I think this is a good question jessica zimmerman wants to know how long do you get to remember your lines i always want to know that we get the scripts you know we probably do a table read when we get the scripts about maybe most a week before we start that particular episode um and then changes are made over the next few days following that and then each day because there's you know we're a small cast we're only five people um, when it comes to our regular cast, which is really small for, for especially a TV show that's been going on this long, but it kind of, because you work so much, it gets broken down into smaller amounts. So it, for me, it's less about trying to memorize everything, you know, the night before it's about becoming familiar with what the intention of the scene is, because for me, the real memorization comes when we rehearse the scene. So we'll usually rehearse something with the director two or three times, then the whole crew comes in and watches us do it so that they can then 
light and set up the scene when we walk away, then they get it all ready to go, and then we shoot 20 minutes later. During rehearsal, for me, is the best part, I mean, best time to start memorizing or to solidify, because when you can kind of attach a line to a movement or an action or something else happening, that's when it, that really helps to be like, I say this thing here, and then I walk over here, and then I have that conversation there. So when you kind of start getting these little markers, it makes it easier. And if you were to ask someone who's a memory specialist, like you've got the people who, if you show them a number of with like 20 numbers, they can repeat it right away. And they talk about how they memorize it sometimes by attaching it to walking down a street. So they would put the numbers, hang the numbers on a different part of the street. They would imagine a neighborhood street. So they'd first see a number three on the mailbox and a number four on that house and then number seven on that car. And they would create a narrative that attached the numbers to some sort of a story so that when they repeated it, all they had to do was run through their story and they could remember all the numbers. Wow. And that's, that's the complicated like mentalist version of it. But it's much easier to remember it when, it's much easier to remember your lines when you can kind of attach action to it. And none of our scenes are particularly super long. And I think that helps too, because it's manageable right. chunks. Right. Yeah. Well, I've kept you. I think that's a, first of all, let me just say on this, I've always been fascinated with acting, but I have a memory. What, who has a bad memory? A fish? A goldfish. Elephant? Yeah. A goldfish, I think has like three seconds, which is why, well, I think they just say that so you don't feel bad about putting them in a bowl. <laughs> but allegedly a goldfish has like a three second memory. Yeah. I'm like a goldfish, okay? I feel like my memory's <laughs> good, but then there's moments I'm like, and especially right now, because I have no concept of time. So at least with, if we, if I was out doing something, like I went to this event, then I would know. But definitely not right now. Not right now. <laughs> I'm like, back oh, with, with I'm going to have to have a training, like, like a week of training before we go back to work where I get up at a decent time and I and I shower, yes. and I go, and I'm going to make up some bra. fake lines. Yeah, exactly. I'm going to have to train myself back into presentable life and yes. do my job. And learn how to wear heels again. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus, Lord, help me. I know. I'm, I think I'm going to start teaching classes on just how to clasp that bra on or whatever, I know. you know, that I we know. all lost during this quarantine. It's but true. it was beautiful getting to know you, getting to talk to you. Um, good luck on the 22nd season. Um, I know Thank a lot you. of people are asking, like, what can we look forward to? We have no idea. It's up to the writers. And you can't spoil it for anybody either. So Y'all, I'm the rookie. I don't know anything. You want to know about Stabler's show? I'm not sure. <laughs> I have to read. I have to read the trades like you do. I think there will be some crossover for anyone wondering. I believe that we might get a little mix between Stabler's new show and ours. But that's me guessing. So. Yes, that's, yeah. that's, that's it, guys. So I appreciate you coming on. I got like 30 seconds remaining. We've been on here for an hour. You were very easy to talk to. Oh, my thank goodness. You thank so, you so much. No, thank you, Jamie. And you know what? Take care. Stay healthy mentally and physically. And thank you again so much. You do the same. Hopefully we'll talk again soon. Same here. Bye. <laughs> Bye, love.